Mario Maker 2 was just announced. Now I've been playing the original Mario Maker since it came out, so needless to say, I'm extremely excited. Oh, what? No way! In this video, we're gonna dive into all the big changes that are already looking to have been made into the game and what else we can expect. Let's start with the first thing they put out to show us. This is not Mario Maker Deluxe. Slopes. Now, in my opinion, slopes were one of the lowest priority tools to add to Mario Maker, but that doesn't mean I'm not thrilled to see them added. With the ability to choose between steep and soft slopes, the option for making levels already includes two more ground options compared to Mario Maker on the Wii U, which is massively welcome when you consider on Mario Maker Wii U, you had the option between ground, uh, blocks, semi-solids, cloud, but nothing that ever simulated an angle. No more must you stack your bullet bills to make poverty slopes in Mario Maker. You got it right in the game now. This is also the first hint we get of the creation screen, which has undergone huge redesign. When the menu opens, you're immediately shown the player pressing the magnifying glass in the top right corner of the screen, which expands a new menu for selecting your level and elements. They appear to be sorted into blocks, including note blocks, donuts, clouds, ice blocks, everything from the original Mario Maker. Then you have your items featuring all of your original items, but with an added 10 coin coin uh, from Super Mario Land 3, Wario Land originally, but most recently seen in New Super Mario Bros. 2. Then to the right of that, you have two circles for enemies. And as far as we've been able to see so far, nothing in here has anything new added in the Super Mario World theme for Mario Maker 2. However, considering that we see switch blocks later in the trailer, I'm sure there's more in that last key item menu that they're intentionally not showing us yet. Once they reveal that it is in fact Mario Maker 2 and not Deluxe, the ball really gets rolling. We're thrown into what could be a Mario Vine compilation of amazing new level elements thrown at us all at once. They show you the awesome looking tornado enemy, which can only be assumed to be Typhoos like from Super Mario 3D World that gives Mario this awesome updraft effect like we've seen in Super Mario Bros. 3. And then they smooth cut into an angry sun from Mario 3 on a new level overworld background on top of an extra long moving platform. This is all really big because if the sun wasn't hype enough, this means that we're going to be seeing more than just changeable level themes between castle, sky, overworld, etc. But with more customizability as to the backgrounds and potentially the music that plays on these levels. Perhaps we'll be able to switch between different overworld themes in different Mario levels within that game. After that, we're shown an icy themed new Super Mario Bros. U level with the new level element of snake blocks included. Now, if you haven't seen them before, snake blocks are the blocks that start moving as soon as you touch them, following a set path already in place by the creator. Now, we can see the player already dragging the leading square along the tiles to make its path. And I assume you'll be allowed to set the amount of blocks your snake block is made out of, at least within a reasonable amount of blocks, let's say from 2 to 10 or something like that. The next two screens are perhaps the ones that had me the most excited. Seeing a swarm of fish chasing Mario and Yoshi is definitely nothing new, but the big thing to take away from this clip is that we now have the ability to add water to levels without requiring a full water level subworld. This is the first time in Mario Maker that we have seen land and water in the same section of a level. On top of that, this water in this level is changing in height. So it looks like there will be a lot of customer customization for what you can do with the water. Now, we're unsure if we'll be allowed to create small pools of water, as this clip shows it taking up the whole X axis, but considering the level of customizability they've shown already, I wouldn't be surprised if they allowed it. After that, we stick in with the Super Mario World theme and get a hint of the Switch Blocks. Now, Switch Blocks are some of the most fun I've had in Super Mario World ROM hacks, and having them in Mario Maker finally is an absolute dream. I'm assuming they'll work in a similar way where you can hit them with Mario from below or perhaps with shells from the side and springs or POWs potentially, uh, as well as the teased grab blocks we saw from earlier. We'll have to see more footage before we can say anything for sure about these switch blocks, but we have a general idea of how they're going to function already. We already see that we have the two modes, the blue versus the red. I don't think we're going to see a third color between them, 
but they are already looking like they're gonna make for a lot of awesome and interesting Kaizo. Next, they take us back into the editor, and we now get to see some of the things changed on the left side of the editing panel. From top to bottom, we have the theme selected, followed by the level theme uh, next to a boat icon. I'll assume for now that this is for that vertical screen shake you get in Mario Maker airship levels that no one likes, and I'm happy to see the option to disable it. Now below that you have a little bird icon, which appears to be the indicator for an auto scroller and a feather next to it. The feather is the important part, but we're going to come back to that in just one second. Below all of this is the timer and then a flagpole icon with a coin number beside it. Now this has got to be uh, either a coin requirement for checkpoints or for the ending post of the level. And then below all that is an icon that looks like some sort of local sharing or two player icon next to the tried and true Mario Trail enable slash disable from Mario Maker on the Wii U. Now back up, we gotta focus on the bird and the feather. The feather next to the bird appears to be a way for the player to build in custom pathing into their auto scrollers. So instead of being forced to go left and right on your auto scrollers, you now have the ability to bring your auto scrollers in any direction you want, assuming you get to use one of the three preset speeds from the original Mario Maker. This is gonna let you really switch up the style of your auto scrollers, letting you include things like tower climb levels or time descents, or even potentially if you have no heart and level that auto scrolls from the right to the left. Now from here on out, the trailer gives us the biggest thing yet, a brand new theme. There isn't even another 2D Mario game for them to work with. So you know what they did? They took Super Mario 3D World and tooled it into the 2D landscape just for Super Mario Maker. That makes five usable themes for us now. They really appear to have gone above and beyond with the 3D World theme. Without the risk of overloading you with information, right off the bat, they show us the enemy screens, which include all of the tried and true enemies with some 3D world additions like the Ant Trooper, the Porky Puffer, which is like a big cheap cheap with spikes, the Piranha Creeper, which is a piranha plant that follows a little path and you can jump on his head, the Hop Chop, which I can only assume will be stepped on to turn into a spring, the Skip Squeak, which is the mouse that ran on little wheels in Super Mario 3D World, so I'm sure they're going to have some interesting applications with the treadmills. And then in addition to that, you have the Big Bad Bullies from Mario 64 and Sting Bees. The only thing you don't see in this screen that I really would have liked to is Charging Chucks, but later on in the trailer we do see some enemies not shown here, so I'm still remaining hopeful as we've also yet to see things like Bowser and Bowser Jr. So there's got to be more to this menu that we haven't seen just yet, whether it is unlockable elements that they haven't shown inside of this, elements they may have removed for the development or trailer version, or perhaps there's just a menu that they just didn't open entirely. Now just like New Super Mario Bros. U has its iconic propeller hat, 3D World got to bring the cat suit to 2D World. Just like in the Wii U title, you can use the cat suit to climb walls for a short amount of time, and it looks like you can jump directly upwards while you're on the wall. Next, they show us the Piranha Creepers and how they work in the editor. Similar to Snake Blocks, you drag them along the path uh, you build for them. They'll go to the end of this path and then return back to the beginning shortly after. And then you can bounce off the top of their heads too if they work like they have in previous Mario titles. After that, you see exclamation blocks, and these blocks I'm assuming will work the same as snake blocks, where every time you hit it, it builds a step of the path you have provided, but we only get a small preview of this. Between these three items, the piranha creeper, the snake block, and the exclamation blocks, the custom pathing feature looks like it's going to be really important in Mario Maker 2, and I'm very excited to see what elements they include the use of with it. The next screen takes us to a 3D World water section and gives us the trademark clear pipes from 3D World. Now these are probably going to be short distance travel pipes that take you to a different place in the same overworld instead of pipes that take you to a different subworld. So we see fireballs travel through them like they do in 3D World, but you can assume things like shells and Mario will also be able to make their way through. Now, after this, we get a hint of what I assume is a 3D World castle level based on its design mirroring that of the Bowser car fight levels in Mario 3D World. This gives us a chance to see Bonsai Bills approaching from the background of the screen though. 
If these bullet bills or bonsai bills have the capability to crush through foreground elements, I can only imagine how great Carl Sagan's Mario Maker 2 troll level contests are going to be. I hope to see other elements in the background of Mario Maker as well and in other themes of the, other than just 3D worlds. The clip montage continues uh, through the trailer and gives us a ton of more information such as seesaw styled platforms on Super Mario Bros 3 that can also go on rails. And the fact that there is one above Mario's head here also shows that they are semi solid allowing you to jump through from the bottom onto the above level. We also see our first instance of the 10 coin coin here for the first time in game and not in the editor. There also appears to be a coin counter in the top left hand corner of the screen which looks to be like an indicator from the coin counter for the checkpoint or end flag gate we saw earlier in the video. After that, we cut to a Super Mario theme which gives us enemies attached to parachutes coming out of a pipe. Oh, and if that's not hype enough, the pipe is red. So you can assume pipe color customization is confirmed. Back into the new Super Mario Bros. U theme, we see a galactic background, which appears to have a Star Road or Mario Galaxy kind of vibe. You also have the first showing of Yoshi in the trailer so far, but he's red and he's spitting fire from the Koopas that he's eating. Now this confirms that we're getting multicolored Yoshis with different powers based on their color. Similar to Super Mario World, where blue Yoshis allowed you to fly, yellow Yoshis allowed you to stomp, red Yoshis allowed you to spit fire, and green Yoshis would use the properties of the shell color that they were eating. Hopefully we do see the yellow and blue Yoshis come into the game as well, with potentially adding a few others, and hopefully we also see yellow and blue Koopa shells to complement this change. If blue and yellow Koopas do make it in, I would also love to see the disco shell from Super Mario World. The last scene shows 3D World Mario zooming through a jungle level with a lot going on, but I'll cover everything here. First of all, you have parachute Goombas falling, which indicates that they, because they're on Goombas this time, that we can confirm that their uh, parachutes are attachable to different enemies. The big guy in the middle here, Boom Boom, is a good hint that we're going to be seeing a few more boss options than just Bowser and Bowser Jr. as well. Hopefully we get a little bit more than just Boom Boom though. I'm curious to see how he'll behave in the Super Mario Bros. 3 theme. Lastly, they do have a bonsai bill coming at Mario in the foreground of this scene. So they should be usable from both the background and the foreground in at least the 3D world theme. Now, we didn't really have much of a hint at multiplayer, but the end screen does show Mario and Luigi. Now, I think Mario holding a little cat suit Luigi doll in his hand makes me think that perhaps we're going to have the ability to not only make levels with all these cool custom elements, but I think we're going to be able to select our characters or force the player to play as the character the level has been built for. So I'm hoping just as we had in 3D World and Super Mario Bros. 2, we're going to have levels where you play as Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad, and hey, maybe even add Rosalina in there if they're feeling excited. That detail I'm sure we're going to see more information on before the June 2019 launch window. And that's all I've got for today, guys. Thanks so much for listening. If you have any uh, other things you think you saw that I didn't, feel free to leave it in the comments. And make sure you leave a like on the video if you found the information helpful. Don't forget to subscribe as well, and hope you watch next time. Have an awesome day, and let's get excited for Mario Maker 2.